right, all right. Let's see if this is all working for me here. Let's see if my voice comes through this. Maybe sorta. Ooh, it is buffering. Public stream is on. Analytics. Analytics. What are we doing wrong here? Let's see. Audio is going through. Try that out. Okay. So why is audio not happening? Are we set on the right? That might be our th problem, maybe? Is our audio not the right one? Properties. Device. Try that. Hmm. Let's see, we've got, well here, we can also get our audio going. So that works. see if this is all oh, working for me here. I'm just way behind. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me through the fun here as I'm trying to get this all to work for me. But if I can just switch this over to this, now we're in the game. So can I? The fun here. Ooh, I can hear myself. Trying to get this all to work. Doubly. All right. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Oops. No, I don't wish to exit. <laughs> so I know originally it was my plan to stream the new. Uh, the new update to, what was it, Baldur's Gate 3 today, but I just found out quite recently that they made a goof, so I was like, great, so now we're going to try and build in Planet Zoo for a bit, and it's kind of just, uh, just working on the backstage here a bit, we've got the open savanna here that was in our last episode, We've got the Gemsbach over there in Australia. And really, I'm just trying to fill in this middle area here and get a lot of the backstage connected up and just make sure it looks nice uh, because otherwise, what's the point? 
but also too, we've got, not right here, but over here, zoom it in here. We've got the monorail that comes through here and it comes this direction. And so they kind of get to see the backstage coming through here. So we want to make sure that the, the parking lot back here is, looks really nice. Because if they're coming through here on the way back to the station and they're seeing all this backstage area, it's got to look nice. But that's the funny thing, the difference between a, uh, a zoo and a theme park like Disneyland is Disneyland you'd never see the backstage. Disneyland you'd never see the backstage. And uh, in a zoo, they don't care as much. They don't have the money, the budget for that. All right. Just double checking the stream here. Wondering if. Can I'm on normal latency, yeah, everything's fine. We're just having a bit of a lag. Cool. All right. I guess we're just going to build and hopefully it all works out. So I did get a couple of mods to put in here. I've got the sausageless sausage tree here, which actually, um, it's funny because people were up in arms about it, but they only, I've, I've heard tell that they only fruit uh, for a short time every year, which I mean, it's like every tree that has fruit, apple trees, cherry trees, they all just have fruit for a little bit. So I kind of like the, the look of it without the dangling sausages here, and I'm going to work it into our rock work here a bit. So it kind of looks like it's coming off of the side of a mountain or something like that. It kind of reminds me of like an olive tree, another fruiting tree that does not, uh, that does not have fruit all year round. Um, but I am looking into probably uh, maybe getting a mod for the uh, the rainbow eucalyptus. I like it. I don't know what the, the mod looks like, but I know someone did a mod for it. But the big one is the mod for the yellow fever tree, which I liked. Um, I liked the yellow fever tree, but it just was so plasticky yellow. And I really liked this, um, this sort of mapley bark that they've added to it. So it helps a bit. And of course, we have our greater kudu here as well, which are a mod in the game. Which I just, uh, is something that's so, um, I just love the kudu. I think it's the lesser kudu that's in the San Francisco uh, savanna area. But um, I, they didn't have a lesser kudu on the workshop, so I went with the greater kudu. I just wanted to put a couple in there. So let's see, we've got our kind of... Um, low-lying workshop building going on back here. I don't want to do too much with this. I'm basically just going to probably, actually, I don't know what I want to do here. I'm probably going to just, I actually, <laughs> I made, I have this thing here that I really should change up probably right now, actually, instead of talking about it, let's just do it. I can make it curved pathway. Actually, what I think I'm going to do, let's mess around with this a bit. If I do this, I definitely love the paths in this game. <laughs> they are my favorite thing because they never make sense. And of course, that is sarcasm. Let's try, I mean, just look at that. Like, you could just make it nice and straight and even, but you got to fight me on it. I'm going to try doing something like that. Gives a little turnout before we go down the alleyway here. And, of course, we've got this lovely curve here, which I think if I actually just do the little trick. Oh, gosh. 
it bubbled it out in another weird way. Let's try a smaller. Nope. I might just uh, might just leave it be and try to put some rock worker planting there. But this way we've got a nice uh, turnaround here. If uh, someone's coming down, usually, I mean, golf carts are probably going to be fine to get down here. Actually, we should pull out one of our golf carts. Um, I always use the workshop stuff because I don't have the bloody time to build a golf cart. Uh, what are they called? They're not called carts, are they? They're called zoo vehicle. There we are. Zoo staff vehicles. Is that the ones we like? Or have we been using these ones? I think we've been using these ones. Actually, let me double check because I got one over here. I'm nothing if not a stickler for uniformity. Okay, so we are using the second ones. Let's just do a duplicate. I got our bongo exhibit there. Zooming back over. Okay. So, so far we've placed a go-kart. Let's, I've got this retaining wall going on here. Let's get the, I think let's bring the dirt over here, bring the land up. Like so. I think we'll bring the retaining wall in and curve it around. I think that'll be our next step. That's right, I forgot about how I bridged the gap there. I think if we do something like this, where is that extra little piece? I'll just seal that up real nice. Always the problem with doing angles with these. Let's just go ahead and find a smaller plaster piece. Okay. really do love the plaster pieces. Just because, I mean, I've, I come from, I come from a long line of builders. Now I come from a uh, planet coaster where we literally were building with windows. It was the, the, the windows wall method is what we called it. And we would just be trying to get this plaster look by turning windows around. And now we finally have a game that we can do that in without turning it around. And they just added more pieces, so I think that's good enough. Little uh, concrete slacking there. And I think what I'm going to do, actually, is let's go ahead and keep the terrain like that. Let's bring the terrain down a bit. I think we're going to, let's flatten the terrain. Let's bring this up. Actually, where is this at? Let's do this. So that height. Because really we only need the retaining wall super close to the, uh, to the pathway there, to the roadway. And if we can bring this down, 
we can end the retaining wall right there and it's not going to be a problem. Uh, not that way. Let's do that. Okay. And let's just do a little smoothing. I haven't decided yet if I wanted to want to continue this wall all the way to there or if I'm going to cut it and put more plants. We'll decide later, I suppose. But um, this retaining, or uh, not retaining wall, this sort of blind uh, is inspired by the back wall in the very back of the San Diego Zoo. They have this ivy colored fence and you can definitely see that there's fence through it, but it's such a cheap way to create a blind so that nobody can see through it, just grow some ivy on it. Like, why not? I tried to uh, vary it a bit, like I did repeat the same one over and over and over again, but I went back through and added ivy into it. I think it sells it enough, uh, though you can definitely see the pattern after a bit, but I think once I put, because I'm thinking about I've got to work on the path over here. I'm thinking about kind of curving this out and putting some plants and stuff here for the monorail to go over. And I think once I do that, you're not going to notice the repetition of the ivy too much once there's things in front of it. And I might also, too, sort of create a nice curve with a fence for the pedestrians over here as well. I was going to recreate the, because I've got a nice bathroom over here, a working one, but it looks more realistic than the than how they would normally be in game, because I tucked it back in there, we've got a nice water fountain also from the workshop, like the workshop is just the best place, people make the coolest things, but um, the only problem is that the only reason I could have this uh, <laughs> the um, restroom is by hiding it under a giant top <laughs> and unfortunately on the other side I've got this cool little lattice structure that um, I'm probably gonna put some HVAC units and stuff like that in and so uh, it would pop through the top so I can't do that so it's just alas I just kinda finished it off and made it boring but I'll, I'll probably create a nice little sitting area over here or something all right let's see here I don't really need to do anything more with this I think I'll just leave that be we created our little land little landing zone here for this I'm trying to not use too many pieces on on the backstage as if I can possibly do that just because I'd rather use all the pieces on the really cool um, parts of the exhibits in the zoo. So I'm going to, I'm trying to make them look functional, look visually appealing from a distance, but not really um, be the, um, not really be super intricate, which is why I'm not going to worry too much about sinking doors and things into the wall. I think we can probably end that here. Let's see. There's, I know there's a small little window. That's what I want. Do I want to put that around? Curved walls are the hardest to do. I also got this one. Let's just go with um, this one and let me grab the right color. No, that's not the right one. Um, what color is this corrugated iron wall? Uh, 7C93A5. 7C93A5. Oops. A5. Better. I like that. We'll keep the coloring. Um, one thing I am sorely missing from Planet Zoo, and I still don't understand why we don't have it in this game, is um, they used to have an, the ability to click right here, and it would put it in your recent colors, and they don't, and it baffles me. 
and I still to this day do not understand that we've gone a year and a half in this game and we still don't have the ability to do that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and make that darker. Cool. Can we just do, yeah. Let's do a little flip. That looks good. I will say, I will say something nice. Um, I say lots of nice things about this game. This is a great game, <laughs> but I will say something nice about their window pieces is that they actually managed to look good without having to sink them in the wall, though sinking them into the wall, like obviously this is not a window piece, this is a workshop, but sinking them in the, into the wall gives a whole different perspective on it, a whole different sense of realism. Um, but because I'm not going to spend an hour and try and, and extra pieces to make sure that these all sink into the wall, I, um, I'm happy that they still look okay. Those windows bother me though. Let's move you over. Let's do something like that. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, so from above, nice little variation. We got this kind of cool corrugated middle area, windows backstage. Let's add some plants in and we'll call it a day. Um, I'm kind of worried about putting the fever tree down though. Just because the last time I put down the fever tree it crashed the game. So maybe we'll not use the fever tree. Let's put... We have a lot of eucalyptus over on this side. So I think I'll probably just continue that theme over here. I guess we'll go for the smaller one. Kind of continue that on. What's funny is the rainbow eucalyptus uh, is the one that is most commonly seen in California. And and yet, it's <laughs> I like the stringy wood eucalyptus better. It it looks to me more like what I see around me every single day. Um, but that that's the number one reason I think I want to look into a mod for the rainbow eucalyptus because it just doesn't match with what I know. It's a little too colorful. Let's do a little tilt. Let's tilt you. Can I raise you up or is that going to pull you way out of the ground? No, not too bad. Let's move you in though. Cool. Something simple. Continues on that look. Honestly, instead of... Let's go for... What do we have over here? We've got... We got lots of different types. What's the one we've been using? That's our kind of old, old zoo tree. I think it's this one, the beech tree. Yeah, because there's certain trees in this game that just remind me of like city zoos that have been around for eons and have just never changed. And then the beech tree is definitely one of those trees that remind me of of that, at least in California. And so, let's see here. Yeah, between eucalyptus and beech trees, it gives that specific old zoo vibe. And since we're we're in kind of the older section of the of the zoo, granted th this area would be new, uh, new remodel, but this area um, is modeled after the. Um, what is it called? The urban jungle in the San Diego Zoo, which is like the oldest section of the zoo. Which, I mean, terrible name. I mean, somebody, some, uh, like in the early 1900s, thought that was a good idea, but uh, I, I would say that they probably should just change the name. Just not stand the test of time. But uh, I think adding a couple of these trees definitely sell the vibe of it being one of the older parts. Uh, do we have, what is it, ash wood or something like that? 
Let's pull up the trees. There's beach, back black poplar. Actually, a couple of black poplars would be nice right over here. Just something that would be just planted for the sake of planting trees. Uh, that's what I was looking for is the common ash. I think we'll leave that alone. And like I said, I don't really want to spend an eternity over here and put a whole bunch of stuff. I just want to make it look good from the air. I don't want it to just be this like hole that I did all this work on these other ends over here and, and then back here is all this terrible stuff. I should probably move some of these common reeds over because that'll look good coming down. Um, the common reed does not get enough love in this game. I don't know if I if I just never used it before, or but I just started using it over in this section here, and it just, especially if you sink it down, it just has this very distinct look to it. And this is the this is the Nitaria. It's one of the new. Oops. Nitaria. It's one of the new plants that came with the Africa pack, I believe. I don't think this is one of the free ones. Um, but what this is great is that this reminds me of, I think it's the Cosette, the Cosette bush, because that one was, uh, this is reminds me of the Cosette bush that was in Planet Coaster, which was just like a, a mess. It was like all wiry branches and it was uh but it looked so like overgrown and and like a um like you'd imagine the the backstage of a uh of a theme park would look like because they probably don't put as much money and effort into making the backstage look good and so this one kind of gives that vibe because nobody's going to be really back here like messing with all of this it's just gonna um it's more or less the trees that they want because it kind of shields that in and looks good and blocks sound from the road. But then most of this is just going to be like mostly going to be grass, honestly. I think I've got all the long grass in there. Yeah, I've got some long grass. I've got some short grass. I think we look good there. Let's see here. What happened? <laughs> oh man, I didn't even see the chat. I literally thought that nobody was in the chat, but somebody's in the chat. Hello, Zuv. Hello, Ro Rocco. I think it's Rocco. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining in here. Only the second stream, so you have to bear with me of the growing pains here. Wow. All right. So that actually looks okay. I put a little bit more in the front there. And uh, I, I love, uh, I, I do tend to put, um, if I can possibly, uh, I put a lot of big bushes that don't need a lot of attention or pruning in the back. And then also lots of succulents and cactus because they don't need a lot of water. And they'll be putting all the water towards um, all these palms and other plants, especially the rainforest section right over here and right over there. It'll be much... Uh, more important. I can't read your name, but hi, welcome. <laughs> Looks like maybe Julius. But I'm, I mean, that's I'm I'm 
basing that off of my knowledge of the Greek alphabet, then that does not look Greek. It looks Arabic. I might be a fool. Let me know if that's Arabic. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move over here. Just gonna grab some of these corkwood trees um, and just kind of plant them in over here. No happy accidents, <laughs> just trees. Let's see. It's funny, I usually play on pause which I am playing right now but I usually also play without the sound on so hearing all of the uh, trees being planted is so surreal to me I'm like what is that noise I keep thinking that something's uh, coming in from outside let's see here oak tree I want to put an oak tree here because I've got a lot of oaks over in the bongo exhibit My name is Hassan, and I'm from Occupied Palestine. Oh my gosh. What is that like for you? Like, that's gotta be, like, absolutely insane. Let's see here, let's plant down the oak tree. I am in, I am on a bit of a uh, time dilation here, so I'm respond I'm seeing your comments and responding, but you're not going to hear them for a second. California <laughs> where I'm where I live though is not sunny it's very overcast <laughs> hey Paul <laughs> hail me I do love these uh, new palms we got in the game. They're like the best thing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can... I'm trying to make this... Oh, I see. I still have that over there. Let me try... Oops. Pull the path in. No, that just messes up the rest of the path. Hmm. Yeah, I'll come back and work on that. I think so we've got Yeah, let's go ahead and work on the curb over here. I got these lovely walls and and this gate from I believe it was Toves. Toves plays. If you haven't checked out his channel. Uh he has way more subscribers than I do, so I don't he does not need my help, but you should check out his channel. He's good it's good stuff. I want to say that it's the, the new series where they're building everything out on a hill. Got wolves and like, it kind of reminds me of a California landmark or Yellowstone or something like that. Right. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me today. We're kind of just taking a moment to relax and breathe. Because there's lots of 
crazy going on in this world right now, and at the end of the day, the best thing we can do is just breathe in and breathe out, and acknowledge that we're not in control of most of it. We're only in control of what we do. I think I might just leave that open like that. Nah, I'm not going to do that. Let's see. Yeah, that's the shortest one I got. I actually, this is how I'm going to fix this problem. I'm going to bring it out a bit more. You always got to sink it, move it vertically, move it horizontally, present, prevent the Z fighting. There's no fighting in the zoo, even Z fighting. Also, I turned animal fighting off so nobody can fight. They are forced into <laughs> being nice to each other. Now, let's do the other side. It's funny, in the older part of my zoo here, I've got these wooden beams that I'm using as curbs. And just curbing everything out adds the, to the realism as well. But um, <laughs> but I used the wood beams uh, toward the front of the park, and so I'm continuing that here. But I've um, in sort of the newer parts of the park, I'm using more of the plaster. But I like the, the wood texture because it reminds me of like old concrete, which makes sense for the older part of the park. And then the new part of the park gets the nice clean plaster. That would be brand new and added. Hassan, you don't enjoy me <laughs> curbing my sidewalks? <laughs> my dude, we are here to have a zen moment and relax. And just make sure that everything is peaceful. Actually, this is my favorite part about Planet Zoo, is that it is a really... It's, it's like a Zen garden for me. I just get into it, and I feel mellow, and a lot of the stress goes away, and I just relax. Wah. Ooh, come on. Let me select the right thing. Thank you. And really, as long as I'm not getting crashed out of the game, knock on wood, um, there's not a reason to be stressed when playing Planet Zoo. Dang it. Mm. Let's try that. Let's see if I can slide gonna look a little wonky, but I don't think it's terrible. Nah. Don't even notice. If you weren't here when I built that, you wouldn't even know. Okay. And then, let's see, we've got... We're using the concrete wall on this side. I think I'm just gonna continue that if I can. Let's do a quick save. <laughs> <laughs> I do have animals in my park. 
Uh, it's funny because it's like it took me about, gosh, two weeks into the game to actually put animals in. No, I think I put in, so, okay. We're going to take a little trip. I'll take a little trip over here. So, first thing I did was build a parking lot. And I'm already, like, I need to go back and redo the parking lot. But as it stood, I did not... I did not know how this game would handle a large piece count because Planet, uh, sorry, Planet Coaster had a really tough time handling large parks. So far, Zoo has been actually really great at that. Um, so eventually, someday, I'm going to go back and fix this because I don't really like this. It's kind of like all over the place. It's very bland. But I'm going to definitely do that once the actual zoo part is done, because wasting a lot of piece count over here anyway, regardless, is not uh, not a really a good idea. Uh, but as you can see, I put a couple eucalyptus in here to give me the idea of what I'd like. But yeah, so I basically spent the first week just building out over here. Uh, the entrance is over here, and they come over this bridge. We've got a sort of kiosk here that has another hidden entrance and they come in from this direction and um, and then I built the entrance which looked very different than it does now it actually um, I went back and did a redo of the entrance around the time of the anniversary which was what last October yeah so it's almost almost been a year now actually but I went through and I um, actually, this uh, this is by Drac, another creator um, who was who was awesome enough to to make that. He's got a whole bunch of other really awesome statues as well. And um, but the big thing was I did these um, uh, I guess you could call them roof pieces. I mean they're not really roofs because the roof is up here. They're just kind of like these shingle side uh, decorations. That, that is very inspired by the San Diego Zoo because they have something that looks like that. And and I had to come through and do all of this as well with, uh, with it making it super angled and having all of these pieces come in, which is very much like the San Diego Zoo as well. Did not do the interiors yet. That's someday I'm going to do that. Got Ricey Reptile House over here. And I still need to do a lot of work on the entrance, but basically I got this part in, like the structure of the building in. I built out the flamingo pond up at the front here, which uh, has way too many flamingos in it, but you know, who's counting? And that was uh, that was basically week two was when I made the flamingos, and then I proceeded to continue on here so I'm um, animals are a very important part of the game obviously but they are not the uh, the thing I play the game for necessarily I play it to make something really beautiful that uh, the the animals can be a part of obviously because they are also beautiful but when you're coming through here I mean we'd have a implied exhibit here that's not even not even full of an animal let me go through. We've got our queue here for the tram. We've got a keeper talk with a parrot. Another one by Drac. Uh, if you've not seen Drac's birds, that's that's what I forgot. Drac does all of the the birds. Not all of them. There's somebody else that does birds. I hope this is by Drac. I might be completely wrong on on the parrot here, but Drac does a lot of birds. And then, of course, we've got our Himalayan... I think it's the Himalayan brown bear? Is that what we got over here? Oh, hello. Uh, yes, Himalayan brown bear. So, there's a little detour for you there. And then, of course, we got the backstage here. Actually, let's show off... <laughs> let's show off since I've since I'm over in this section. Um, we've got with the new pieces I used to have, cause I still have a, a wall here, which I think is fine because the bears are back here at double security, 
but I really hated the gate that I had here that led to the backstage of the koalas because uh, it just kind of cut in and ruined this whole little look here. But now that we've got these mesh pieces, um, I made a little little gate. So as people are walking down on the sidewalk here, obviously they're not spending too much time on the sidewalk, but this gate can open up and let the, the keepers back here. Yeah. So let's go back to, let's see here. There we are. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done with that section there. Um, I might... Oh, this was the other thing I was thinking of doing, was ha having... Can I... I'm going to have a problem with making a walkway over here, because I've got... Uh, let's see. I've got a, a rise in the soil here. Um, what do I want to do? I mean, I've got my walkway back here. That's the ideal place for it. Do I want to just move this back or move this forward? Let's try doing this. What does this look like? Well, then that's just in the way. It's okay. I think what we're going to do... That was what I was in the middle of. <laughs> Got sidetracked. I was in the middle of using the concrete here to curb this side. Which is another really easy way to do a curb. But it's... Um, it might be less time consuming, but I still think the other way looks better. Um, what do we do? Let's drag you over. Half of this game is also problem solving too. Okay. this around yeah I think that's fair not sure what to do with the extra gap here um, I might just leave it alone it'd be really nice if I had like a gravel I mean we have the gravel path piece but if there was a because, I mean, the best I've got as far as terrain options is the coarse sand, which I guess looks okay. Looks better than putting grass there or rock there. So I might just do that because that looks nicer. Um, let's bring that up to 100%. Yeah, let's go with that. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, let's go with Yeah, we'll say one thing I learned pretty quickly from Planet Zoo and really Planet Coaster too because I started getting really into building in there first. But um, one thing I learned from that was that the best way to build is to separate all your pieces and not to just build on the grid. So I've got like, for this one, I've got the exterior piece here. I've got building pieces. I've got other building pieces, but they're all separate from each other. So I can definitely make sure that they, um, line up too. And you could see that as well uh, in the roof over here. Because if I just left 
all these pieces on the same grid, there would be horrible Z fighting and everything would look awful. But because like right here, each one of these is a different one. And then they nestle a little bit better. Um, okay, I'm right in the middle of... Let's do that. But I think I'm going to go ahead and... Oops. I guess it didn't want to click there. Split from group. All right. Just going to make that look nicer. Got a little gutter going on there. Now, is this actually, yeah, that's a separate path color. What I might do, actually, I saw this really cool method that was being used on a another build and they put these sort of walkway guidelines in so that cars could still walk or still walk still drive over them but people would have a safe uh, zone to walk in to do that we're gonna have to turn these okay much better Because when you're backstage, the uh, the argument being in favor of these, when you're backstage, you're trying to make sure that there's enough room to do the things you need to do, and it's less important to have sidewalks, uh, but it is still important for safety reasons, obviously. And plus, it just looks cool. I mean, it just totally added to the realism right there just by adding some stupid white lines. Okay, let's go and split that from the group. I think what I'm going to do over here, let's go ahead and add a little bit of a, let's actually, let's grab the plaster back again, because I feel like we have a new plaster piece that is smaller, is that the one I'm looking for? I think so. Oh, they have really small ones. Let's try this one. And I think it's AC. Oh, it won't let me change the color for some reason. Are these not recolorable? This will be the newest shock. I can't imagine that that's the case. Alright. Do AC, AC, AC. We get a texture or a color that's a little bit closer to the concrete in the game. And while, yeah, I don't really have a. I would have liked to continue this uh, as a walkway here. I mean, I technically could, but I'd have to get rid of this extra parking. 
I mean, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Maybe I'll do that eventually. But for right now, I think we'll leave it be. Wow. What are you looking at here? This is a primitive rectangle. Gadzooks. What color are we looking at here? There we go. Let's do a bit of a walkway here. Actually, we could probably go for the slightly longer piece. Because we're not doing anything fancy with it, we're just making some lines. I absolutely love the music in this game. I often listen to it while I'm uh, working just because it is totally relaxing. The irony though is that I never listen to it while I'm actually playing the game. I'm always listening to a podcast or something. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good. to do see if we can move these all down yeah that'll be nice then we can make these lines end there all right much nicer much nicer and of course, these people are going to walk wherever the heck they would like to walk. But as far as the game looks, it's a lot more realistic that way. Hmm. You know, I really... I'm really double... I'm really considering just removing this. Yeah, because realistically, we'd have a walkway here. And there wouldn't really be anything in front of this loading zone anyway. So let's actually, let's just bite the bullet. Let's do that right now. Um, let's go move you up. Oh gosh, of course we got a little terrain change there. It's going to complicate everything. Going to muck everything up for me. If I pull it back now. Actually, better yet, way we can get around this, because we're all about <laughs> getting around things so that we don't get caught up in extra BS. Let's go ahead and bring this over. Um, no, let's make it smaller. All right. And let's bring this through. We could probably make the walkway even thinner. Actually, let's line it up here, and that's the way we should do it. Let's go with that. Much better option. here. Much better. And let's go ahead and we're just going to get rid of this corner. All right, I 
need to figure out how to make that look okay. Actually, good idea. No. Let's just do it this way. Should probably fix the raised pieces here because it's a bit too high. Come on, come with me now. Come with me, pieces. We're gonna grab all of you, and we're gonna lower you gently. Killing you softly. Where's that? No, yeah, they're all pretty high. And not in a good way. People wonder why it takes so long to build in this game. You're just selecting tiny, tiny pieces. Making sure they're all selected. Okay. All right. Let's hope this works. There we go. Much better. Beautiful. Okay. And we can take this piece and delete that. Move this one over and finish off our loading zone. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it would look much better if I just did this. <laughs> also probably would look much better if that was even with the wall, but you know, we're just not gonna worry about that right now. There's no point in worrying about that. Don't worry. Be happy. All right. Oops. Selection two. Excellent. Okay, much better. We got this walkway going on. Good. Yep, we didn't need a car there. It didn't need to happen. We got parking there. There's parking over here. Right there. Got plenty of parking. There's gonna be a whole bloody parking lot up around the corner here. Ooh, ah. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, and of course we've got a nice hole in the middle of our exterior fence there. But it's okay. <laughs> Let's see, do I want to use... I think I might use the plaster. Um, I don't think I'm going to use the plaster here, though. I think I might use it... Actually, you know what? What's funny? So we just were to smooth this out. Like so. First off, that looks much better. There we go. And I think what I might just do is just use the uh, the concrete pieces again because they they look okay here. We'll sit down just to create a little barrier for the cars so that they don't run off. I'm not worried about cars running up here. I think that we're gonna put some bushes there. It's gonna look okay.
everything of the parking lots on a grid, which does help. It does help. Um, I feel like we. This is gonna be tough. We're gonna have to slightly twist ya so that. Yeah, that does it. It's actually pretty good. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the, um, what do we got here? We're going to use the plaster on this uh, section here. So it doesn't need to really be thick or high. We're just going to create a bit of a, a bit of a wall. Turn it. So funny with the backstage stuff. I spend so much time and energy in the other things and making things not look boxy or symmetrical. And uh, for backstage, I just don't have that same drive to do so. It's like, it looks okay. It actually looks okay. Uh, plaster. I just want it to look okay. <laughs> and let's bring you around. All right. Okay. Pretty good. I think we've been using the cork wood. In order to make these lovely bushes. That's how I have the whole um, Bongo forest set up is it's all just cork wood. <laughs> We're just going to place these around so that they look good. So funny. It's supposed to be a tree, but it looks way better as a bush. We actually don't have that many good bushes in the game. There's not really anything that um, that stands out as being a really good ground cover. There's a bunch in Planet Coaster. Like, they've got those fantasy forest bushes, but in Planet Zoo, the irony is there's not really that many. But it's funny because it doesn't really matter because we have this method of sinking foliage in to the ground and making it into something entirely different. Let's see, let's go for, should I put a palm here? That might be nice. I love these new African oil palms. Mm-hmm. I also like using the bamboo in tropical areas, just sink them way down and they look like tropical plants or tropical ground cover. Where is Dragon's Blood is good too. Actually, if I do a smaller one, that might be good over here. Because it definitely looks like, uh, like I was talking about earlier, sort of like the um, d uh, drought resistant plants, kind of like succulents and cactus. Where is that? Oh, we got the palm. We could do something like that. Palms are also good for backstage, even though they take up more water than one would probably want to 
use them for. Less than a tree to bush. Nitriata. Nit nitraria. Nitraria bush. Quiver tree. Yeah, that's the other kind of. It's funny, is that like you could put that in there and it just kind of blends in like two different kinds of the same thing. And I think we'll go back to the cork wood to kind of finish this off. something different with the top part there. Hmm. Well, let's see. Also, I should probably change the terrain paint to heavy soil. That'll look a bit better than the grass would anyway. Yeah, it's more manageable. And I think, what is it, the nit, nitraria. I'm just gonna call it the nit plant. It's a lot easier than trying to say it, its full name. I can use that up here. Nestle those in. I'd say we got a pretty basic looking backstage. Now I think I need to add some, probably some doorways here. Uh, probably another one of these uh, entryways here because we do have the cafe. Um, though granted, it's probably going to have to be this tall, <laughs> much shorter. So maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do it over here. Now this is also an open area on the top. I don't know. We've got this. Um, oh, I don't know why I still have that as blue. Let's change that. Wow, that's better. Um, we've got that loading area. So what might happen is they might load and store here because we've got the. Um, the gift shop here. Uh, they might load and store things here. And they probably will just drive it right up. They don't necessarily need to have a big load in dock. Uh, it might just be um, they can just walk in the supplies. I don't know. I'll play with it a little bit. But I think that's going to wrap up the live stream for today, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, friends who have come and commented. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please give me a subscribe. That way you can learn about all the new videos when they come out. You'll be notified about them. I've got several new series going on. We've got the Fermi Paradox that is just uh, going to have its last episode tomorrow. So if you are looking to binge that series, that one's up as well. But um, nevertheless, hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified of the new ones when they come out. And as always, folks, I will see you in the next game.